G'day folks, welcome to this uh, example of play and review of Gregory Smith's Zeppelin Raider Imperial German Naval Airships. This is uh, published by Compass Games in 2019. It's a, a relatively new release uh, and it uses a system similar to Smith's uh, The Hunters. I think he's also using something similar in uh, Interceptor Ace, Night Fighter Ace, uh, and possibly also America Bomber. It um, it focuses on you as the captain of a German Zeppelin during the First World War. Now you can start at any stage in the war, but the main campaign begins in May 1915, where you take command of a P class Zeppelin, which you can see mine just over here. Now the different Zeppelins have uh, different features, different sort of amounts of fuel ballast, they can reach different altitudes, uh, they have different equipment. Let me give you a visual example of how they differ. Here is for example an R class which is available in June. You can see this reaches very high altitudes, has more gas cells, is basically a larger ship. Uh, a Q class available January 1916, the V class available in September 1917, and the S class from February 1917. I will say from the outset, this is um, a very well researched game. Uh, Greg Smith has included a selected bibliography at the end here, but it's clear that he knows his history, he knows the details of these ships, uh, and this is reflected by the way, by, by the rules and the way everything plays out. So you take command of uh, a Zeppelin and you run through basically mission after mission after mission, trying to advance your career, uh, trying to improve your skills as a, a captain or commandant, and trying to uh, improve your crew and essentially inflict bombing points on important targets in England. That's what you're striving to do, to collect or accumulate these bombing points over your career, um, to have a successful career as a Zeppelin captain or, or commandant. But um, that's the long-term goal. Most of the game focuses on the play of these missions, which takes place uh, on this board and just a map of the North Sea. There are other maps as well. So for example, here is the map for the Eastern Mediterranean. So as I said, the game uh, focuses on your playthrough of a mission. Uh, you pick a target, pick a location, you'll travel out from your base to that location. Along the way, you'll check for weather changes, you'll check for damage, mechanical failures. Uh, you'll check for random events like uh, aircraft interceptions and so forth. You'll reach your target, uh, you'll attempt to find your target in that location, you'll drop bombs and flares, or incendiaries, sorry, on that location, and you'll try to inflict these damage points before then returning home and trying to get home safely. Along the way, you are paying attention to your ship, you're trying to manage your altitude, your ballast, your fuel supplies, and trying to stay alive and return home. You may battle the wind, you may battle the rain, um, you may battle enemy fighters along the way. To show you how that works, I'm going to run through uh, a mission, and then I'll give some, or rather an example of play of a mission, just for a few turns to show you how it all works, and then uh, I'll give you some final thoughts when that's done. So to start things off, we need to obtain a mission assignment by rolling on this chart A1. This involves rolling 2d6, I roll a2, so we check 1915, and I have a scouting A mission. So looking at the map, I've put this mission scouting up here, and I need to travel to uh, location A to scout out the area, I'll look for ships, see what I can find there. Along the way I'll have um, uh, the potential for uh, random encounters with... Uh, with the enemy. Now I check for my takeoff weather using chart W1. I roll 1d6, roll a 6, so it is rain. 
and my mission is cancelled. Now, that is the second time this month I've had a mission cancelled. If I can show you my log, my first mission was cancelled due to rain. My second mission, I bombed a tailor shop instead of my intended target due to a navigational error. And my third mission is cancelled. So in one month, in three missions, I've done very little achieved, uh, virtually nothing but bombing some, uh, some poor tailor in London. Let's assume though, for the sake of this playthrough, that I didn't roll rain, that I rolled, let's say, clear weather. So I place a clear weather marker here. There's no wind at the start. And let's go through and play through how a turn or a mission might play through if it wasn't cancelled. I have to first load my Zeppelin by placing some bombs and incendiaries and flares. So I can carry up to four bombs. I'm going to carry three just to show you how this works. And I'm going to swap one bomb for two incendiaries. They're good for attacking things that are flammable, like the timber yard or lumber yard. And then I carry three of these flares. Uh, and these can be used to um, blind anti-aircraft gunners who are trying to attack you um, over your target. Now at this point I could choose to carry extra bombs and lose some ballast or reduce my bomb load to increase my ballast. I'm not going to worry too much about it. This is one of the uh, one of the key decision points you have here is what to equip. It's before you sit down on the mission and yeah, it's a key decision point in uh, in the mission. Okay, so we've loaded up our Zeppelin. The next thing to do is to take off and we increase our altitude due to um, dynamic lift. We then begin our flight sequence and over on the map, I move one space. I can choose to adjust my altitude by losing a point of ballast and that goes up like so. As I've moved one space, I use half a point of fuel. So the way this works is uh, every space you move, you use half. There's the next time I move, I use a full fuel and then half and then a full would be four spaces and so forth as you go along. Uh, when you reach the fourth box, you increase altitude due to the reduced weight from the spent fuel. Now, using ballast to increase your altitude is the second decision point you've made. Uh, you've decided what bombs to equip and now you're choosing to increase or decrease your altitude. You can drop ballast to increase altitude. You can vent your gas cells to decrease your altitude if you wish. Now at this point we check for random mechanical failure and I need to get chart A5 and make another roll on on that one. So for random mechanical failure, I rolled 2d6. I roll a 10 and I've lost uh, I've an engine damage. So this is all summarized on chart B4, Zeppelin damage listings. I just place a damage marker over one of my engines and I can roll to attempt to repair that at the end of the turn. I then check for possible weather change on chart W2. So I pick this up and I roll 2d6 again. It's a 10, which in spring is now clear but windy. So now I need to roll for the wind. It's a 1d6. It's a 5. So now we have some wind. If you look over at the map over here, it's clear and windy. And the wind is now blowing in this direction, which makes it easier to head towards whatever my target may be, to London, but will make it difficult to uh, return home because I'll need to expend extra fuel to travel against that wind. Now I roll for random encounters. If I'm on a bombing um, mission, I roll on the bombing encounters chart. If I'm on the scouting mission, which I was briefly before my mission was cancelled, I'd roll on the scouting encounters. So I roll 2d6 on the scouting chart, uh, and a 9 would be the result of a ship. So I'd encounter a ship and I'd follow through the procedures for encountering a ship um, during this encounter. This involves uh, making a scouting roll to see if you identify a ship uh, positively or probably. You then need to get a closer look to identify uh, 
the ship and sort of send in a report. And you can choose to fly over the target to um, bomb the target, which I'm not going to go through. Now, if you positively identify uh, a group containing capital ships, uh, you gain a prestige point, your mission counts as successful, you can return home. Otherwise, you can keep sailing around by, again, moving, rolling for mechanical failure, uh, rolling for encounters, hoping to find ships and so forth. If you're on a bombing run, you just want to get to your target. Now, once you reach your target for a bombing run, you roll for your location. So if you're bombing London, you use the bombing London chart. You roll on here to see what you're bombing. Uh, then you <clears throat> roll for a navigational accuracy, basically, hoping not to make an error. And then you drop your bombs and you roll for damage, hoping to inflict some damage on an important target. Now, <laughs> that is basically how the game works. You move, you roll, you roll, you roll, you roll, you roll, you roll. You are constantly rolling these dice to get results on this these massive charts, the weather chart, the weather change chart, the random events chart, the uh, navigational chart, bomb damage chart, anti-aircraft attack. It, um, all the while, throughout these entire missions, you are making very few critical decisions. As I said earlier, you are loading out your ship with bombs, you are determining whether or not to carry more or less to adjust your, your ballast, you are making a decision about what altitude, um, well, generally you want to climb to gain some altitude early. Um, as you suffer some damage, you may want to be careful with what you do here. Um, and then you can make a decision you know, whether or not to bomb these ships. But by and large, this game revolves around rolling dice to determine what happens to your ship. You have very little agency in this game. You are not making any important strategic, tactical, operational decisions um, bar those two or three that I've mentioned. This is the kind of game that, uh, a bit like B-17 Flying Fortress, where uh, you, you might like this if you like the story that it tells through these die rolls. So in my second mission, for example, the one that wasn't cancelled, I took off, uh, the weather changed just before I hit the English coast, I arrived in London, I identified the... Uh, what was the target? It was a nice, juicy... I think it was the... Uh, I mentioned the Timberworks target. I can't find the chart. Um, I thought I was going to drop a heap of bombs and my incendiaries on this. It turned out it was a tailor shop that I said, and I caused a lot of damage to a tailor shop. The mission failed, and I returned home. Either side of that mission, I had those two failures due to these dice rolls. Um, I personally don't like this type of game. I find it... I'm just not doing anything. I'm rolling dice and noting the results of my missions on this chart. Cancelled, failure, I bombed the tailor shop, did some points of damage, and the scouting mission was cancelled due to rain. Um, I mean, there are better seasons, so later in the year uh, there's less chance of rain and thus less chance of your missions being cancelled. Um, but again, you have no control over the weather. It's a random die roll. You have no control over these random mechanical failures. It's a random die roll. Um, again, this represents or sort of reflects the historical um, lack of reliability of these ships and the things that can go wrong and did go wrong frequently, the dangers of uh, captaining a, a Zeppelin. Um, but for me, it doesn't make for um, an interesting or a fun or a satisfying game. It is just going through the motions of rolling, looking for the right chart. Again, you can look at all these charts over here that I've just thrown over in a pile. Most of the time you're using three main charts. These are the main charts that you're using, the damage chart uh, and this A chart here. These are the main charts that you're using. Um, but then you've got a bomb, you've got to find this chart, 
or you'll have to record something on your log sheet. So you'll go get your log sheet. You know, you've got five charts plus your captain over here, plus your ship, plus your map. Um, uh, and uh, the biggest frustration is in is flicking between these charts and just rolling dice, and you're not making any decisions, as I've said. So. Um, I did not enjoy this at all. I'm about to get rid of it and give it to a friend. But I recognize that there are people who do like that sort of uh, story, narrative-driven, dice-roll-driven type of game where you can get a very interesting story, I suppose, if you kind of engage with what the dice are doing, if you think it's fascinating that my first mission was cancelled due to rain and so my captain uh, sat at the airfield or the... the um, the base waiting for the rain to clear and then his second mission he was excited to head out you can tell yourself that story to make all these random die rolls more interesting and again i appreciate there are people who who like that type of story for me personally um i like to be involved in the decision making to make a plan to enact a strategy and see how this plays out there's none of that here um, unless you can say adding an extra bomb is my key critical decision because that extra bomb reduced my ballast uh, or carrying extra incendiaries was was an a great decision to make because when I finally arrived in London and bombed the target, it happened to be a flammable target as marked by the big F. And so I was lucky I made that big important tactical decision to carry those incendiaries. Or, or I was lucky I increased my altitude because I... Uh, lost attitude for some other reason due to leaking gas cells so that was a good decision to make um, I don't find any of those little decisions satisfying but again um, to each their own so I'm about to pack this up I've shown you how it works I am happy to be done with this after two cancelled missions and a failed mission um, that is Zeppelin Raider Imperial German Naval Airships uh, published in 2019 by Compass Games